we went to, let's see, this is, we got in on a Friday and we went to our bed and breakfast and um, we took Saturday uh, a jaunt up, well, north actually, to over sur Wars where um, uh, Van Gogh spent his last two years under the care of a doctor there who was also a patron for artists. There were other famous artists who studied, uh, not studied, but were treated by him. Anyway, um, Van Gogh died there and he made the little town famous by painting the uh, rear end of their church. Uh, he is buried there with his brother, uh, Theo, and that's the end of that story. We then drove up to Giverny, which is the homestead of um, Claude Monet, who is extremely famous, one of the most famous Impressionists of all times. Um, we saw Monet's work in the Dorsey Museum, which houses the Impressionist work for the Louvre and the, basically the paintings from 1860 uh, to modern times. And uh, of course the Dorsey, as you know, is a converted train station. It's quite beautiful. We also went to the Angerie on, um, at the southwest corner of the Tuileries Gardens. I never thought the Tuileries was going to be much of a draw for me but in as much as we had lunch there and our dessert crepe had bananas, uh, whipped cream, and chestnut sauce, a confection, um, I gained a new appreciation for chestnuts, which were all over the ground, and they had beautiful big um, yellow-green leaves. And uh, we walked the half mile from the... Um, Angerie, and I have to stop and say the Angerie is the French term for a greenhouse. That's where they kept their orange trees. They actually still grow orange trees there. I don't know if they have a place to put the orange trees in the winter time, but they were out in rows, so it was kind of kind of cool. But we walked the half mile uh, west to east to what used to be the Tuileries Palace, which has been taken over and supplanted by the uh, Louvre Museum, we accessed underground the Louvre uh, through the car Louvre de Carousel. And a carousel is a roundabout, is a circle, and there is a semicircle that traffic passes in front of the Louvre. So we went through the beautiful um, shopping center and into the Louvre lobby. We were there kind of late, so we didn't get to see much. <coughs> Meanwhile, I've congest uh, congested. I've contracted some bron bronchitis, but I'm uh, fighting through it. It's been uh, not too difficult. So um, ultimately, we left Paris today on Sunday at 11. We had a little uh, to do about picking up our rental car because I had to take the subway station. I have to leave two hours early to be back. I left at 9 to be back by 11 with a rental car. Unfortunately, they let me have it about a half an hour early. So I went to St. Paul's uh, metro station, went past the... Um, Bastille station onto the Gare de Lyon station, uh, found my way to the Europe car desk, got my car, and then realized, uh, well, I got in the car and the GPS, my personal GPS wouldn't work. So, uh, I didn't realize that it wouldn't, it didn't even come on. And there was some issue with me putting it in the cigarette lighter properly. Now I got a beautiful little French car. Let's see if we can show you here. Oh, it's sitting right over there and uh, it drives like a dream. 
it's very complex it's all electronic and uh, it takes a little while to poke around to, to get familiar with what all the buttons do um, I got kind of scared because I went through a short tunnel and uh, my, even though my lights were on I couldn't see very well and that was kind of disconcerting there was a problem getting in back into our apartment at the Marais, even though it's only two blocks off of the Rue de Rivoli, <clears throat> St. Paul's Church. Um, there are two police persons there who stop traffic. Only taxis and emergency vehicles can go into the Marais because the, the French people are out there promenading. They're out riding their bicycles. I mean, very early when I, about well, nine o'clock, they were out running up and down the streets, walking. There was groups going here and here, here and there. I didn't see too many people going into the church. But um, when I got back, I was called Judy and said, hey, the GPS doesn't work. I, I'm going to have to get to you by dead reckoning. And she says, well, why don't you use the uh, Google Maps on your phone? It'll talk to you. And I thought, yeah, I could have had a V8. That was so funny. Judy saved my bacon today. Anyway, I finally got back to her. Uh, we got everything loaded in. And uh, uh, we didn't have the GPS to get to our first destination. But we had Google Maps on two phones that gave us a syncopated, uh, but basically the same instructions. So we got here early, it's now 3.30. We decided to sandbag it and not doing tour. It is so gorgeous here. It is unbelievably gorgeous. Now there's, there's no bugs and none to speak of. I thought I saw a spider on a, on a plant and it turned out to be a dead flower. Um, there seems to be uh, some really nice specimen trees. Um, let me say something about this B&B. It's a converted 13th century flour mill that has a mill race and, a, and, a, uh, and it has a mill building uh, on the other side of this building. I believe this was the miller's home. And um, there, I spoke to the uh, daughter of uh, Natalie and Didier, um, the owners, <clears throat> Um, she said that her name, her name was a Natalie and not Natalie, her mother's name is Natalie and her name is Anastasia, which she said she's part, part Polish. And, um, she said it was a Greek Orthodox name and she was a high school, uh, exchange student in upstate New York. It's kind of disconcerting. To hear a young person of uh, one nationality speak as well as we do, uh, I guess, with the same intonation patterns and uh, colloquialisms and things like that. But she went to law school right out of high school for three years, and now she's a translator. Um, and I didn't know this, but um, she said translators translate... Um, from another language to their own language. So I thought that was very interesting because, and it makes a lot of sense. So um, that being said, there's there's basically three rooms that can handle about mm, maybe up to 10 people at a time here. Uh, they serve a continental breakfast uh, on the patio on the other side under the willow tree. And I have pictures of that. I've taken a video of the um, of the mill race that I can show you that. Tomorrow we're going down to uh, we're here two nights. Tomorrow we're going to go in the morning down to Fontainebleau, and um, according to Natalie, our hostess, they they have a room uh, dedicated to each of the kings, Henri, un, deux, trois, quatre. You know, how many Henrys, how many Philips. Anyway, I was um, informed by an author that most of the furniture was of the Empire uh, design. 
because uh, Napoleon Bonaparte was the last uh, the last person to uh, reside in that uh, maybe it was uh, Napoleon the third Twasium anyway uh, whatever uh, we're going to head to Fontainebleau in the morning it opens at 9 I believe and then we're going to come back this way and the uh, Chateau de Vaux le Vicomte uh, is three kilometers from here and so we'll come back here and spend the night before we head out and go uh, on the west side of Paris to um, uh, the village or the town of Chart or Chartres uh, and we're going to spend several hours in the cathedral that we have studied from a course that we took on um, great courses and then tomorrow night we'll be in Beau or Beau uh, France in Normandy in the uh, Calvados region where they make great cheese and cider we hope to have some cheese and cider up there and um, that's all I'm going to report on right now because I'm sure you're quite bored of looking at my face um, l let me say that um, yesterday Judy and I went to um, a place I always wanted to go where the artist uh, hung out at um, Montmartre and uh, we really, really, really tried to avoid um, walking and climbing stairs. And wouldn't you know, we went to the station called Abbasis, uh, Abbas or Abbasis, yeah, I think Abbas, A-B-B-E-S-S-E. And um, it just happens to be 90 meters deep. And we had to walk up circular stairs 90 meters, it was not 90 feet, 90 meters deep. That's 100, 180 feet that we had to climb. We were exhausted by the time we got up there. And when we uh, left the this, this station, which is a little park, we headed out um, up the hill towards the um, Place du Tartre, 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 Tartre. Uh, where the artists hang out and uh, ply their wares and uh, bully uh, tourists but excuse me <coughs> but um we had a we had an incident where as soon as we uh, got uh, to one corner of that plus that square we were approached by a pair of artists who had their boards in front of them and they were ready to sketch and uh, we asked them how much and they said we'll discuss that at the end if, if you don't like it you don't have to take it and they spent a half an hour drawing us one um, the, the gentleman that, that uh, drew my portrait slash caricature um, uh, did a fairly decent job with Conti Crayon in the um, 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 sepia tone which Judy and I knew Judy liked and I like it but the other fellow did a cursory drawing of the face and used uh, ink or like a watercolor a wash to give a, a monotone image of Judy that was almost childish so um, they, they wanted uh, 50 to 85 rubles not rubles, <laughs> getting tired, um, euros. I, I told the, the young fellow that uh, I didn't want it. I didn't like the, the medium. I didn't want to say I didn't like his workmanship, but I said I didn't like the medium. It doesn't look like my wife, and so I'm not going to buy it. Well, that upset Judy. She said, you got a picture of you, and so we had a big to-do about that. But um, I think it's kind of interesting uh, what we've agreed to do, uh, and I've agreed to uh, find someone to do this, is to uh, draw or paint our portrait or other medium like oil pastel um, together, 
to uh, leave for our kids. So with that happy note, I'm going to say au revoir. We'll see you in the next episode. And uh, keep your stick on the ice. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs>